Hey, what's up? This is Mick, and you're listening to Piedmont Artist Profiles on Snow Peak Radio. <laughs> What is going on? Uh, welcome back to Piedmont Artist Profiles, your spot to hear from uh, local artists and musicians. I'm a bit late with this one, but better late than ever. I have a couple uh, projects I'm working on that I'm really excited about coming out in late July. Uh, stay tuned for those. Anyway, in this episode, uh, I sit down in a park and chat with uh, Junko Partner in the knockoffs. I caught up with Fred Heinz at the late night special show down there at the, the Visualite Theater in uh, Charlotte. And we hear some poems from Mr. Witz and uh, Shane Manier from the open mic down at Petra's. That, they're from the uh, Slam team. Just got back from Southern Fried Poetry Slam. They had a good time. Hoping to still do kind of a wrap-up episode on that. It's hard to, to get everybody in one place at one time. So anyway, uh, enjoy the show. Fred Heinz is the lead singer of up-and-coming band Late Night Special. They've been bouncing back and forth between shows and uh, the studio trying to get their, their album ready for release in the fall. I got to catch up with him backstage at the Visualite Theater uh, during one of their shows to see what was up. All right, here with Fred Heinz, Late Night Special at the Visualite Theater. What's going on, man? What's going on, man? How you doing? Been doing good. How's been, things been going since the uh, shakedown? Great, man. It's been busy. Uh, I've been on the road for a couple weeks uh, doing some solo touring. We started that tour off, though, with the band down in Hilton Head, so um, it's been a good three weeks, four weeks yeah. or so since Shakedown. So this venue in particular, the Visualite, um, with Charlotte having so many places closed down, how important are these like venues like this that are full-on stages to the scene? Uh, it's, it's good, man, because uh, a lot of, I guess, local acts get to, you know, jump on bills with bigger bands or just with bands with, uh, you know, a great following in Charlotte. So, like, at a venue like this, it's awesome because, you know, they're getting local talent in along with bringing in big regional and national acts. And uh, it's just really good. Um, I know we played here for the first time a year ago. Um, actually, I think we were opening up for Tyler Boone. It was like one of our best shows, man. Got a fucking encore and just had like a great, it was a great moment for us. It helped build a lot of momentum. Uh, we had some producers and like investors out watching uh, the show and they were just like floored by it. And we just had a really good time and it was nice to be on, you know, like a historical place uh, on a stage like that playing where a lot of people we've came and seen show after show and we got to actually step up there and play. So it's great for places like this, like the Visualites, to still be around around because they have the history that can kind of like backs up the you know the whole aura of a, you know playing a big stage well why is it a big stage i can go build a you know 400 foot stage out in my field and it doesn't mean yeah. it's a big stage to play on you know it's yeah the fl- the place the venue the artists that have came through so places like this are incredible right on um so you, how's the album coming along you guys still working on that I'm yeah sure. dude the album we're just polishing that up hopefully looking to get it out uh right around the fall um sometime in the fall I can't really put a date on anything yet. Uh, we're doing just getting getting some tweaks ready, getting everything right. in place, man. Uh, we really care about this album, and it's it's been a good one. It's been almost more promising than we thought it would be. So we're just kind of taking slow baby steps, making sure that when we release it, you know, we've got the right you know palette to put it out on. Right. You guys using a record label? Or are you doing it independent? Um, we're doing it independent, and it's actually under our label, Full Time Pilot Records. So um, we just do that. It's kind of our own. It's our own label. So right. You got a busy weekend. You're going to be at Grover Fest tomorrow, right? Yeah, I am. I actually will be at Grover Fest tomorrow, and, uh, and there's a new wine bar as well opening up in South, and I'll be playing that tomorrow evening. But really pumped for Grover Fest, man. This is my third year playing it, and uh, it was cool. The first year I ever played it, I actually had to go go in blind with a drummer I'd never played or practiced with, and we like played it, and it was just we're the opening act on Friday evening, and I had so many people come up to me and tell me how much it, you know, just inspired them you know being up there and playing and i was like you know this was a a very amateur stage in my career and i was like man that was so cool to hear people say that and i was so nervous man it was just me and a drummer i just bought a loop pedal and was using it to do solos and like you know it was just so such a crazy moment and uh so grover fest has been awesome man and uh had some awesome times and awesome memories out there doing that and it's just been really really cool man came back last year off a two-week tour and jumped on Grover Fest with the full band and we just rocked face and you know had a, a really great time so we're looking forward to our set this year at 1.30 on Saturday it's cool. going to be great 
What do you got uh, in the next couple weeks? Got more gigs? Um, yeah, I'm actually, I'll be back out on the road doing some solo stuff, man. I'm trying to get out and, uh, you know, really just keep promoting my solo gig. And uh, that's kind of what I do for a living, for a job. And uh, I'm trying to save up a good chunk of money. I'll be doing a month-long run out in California from September to October. And I want to, you know, make sure I got a nice chunk of paper to go out there with that we can have some fun and make it back. I mean, who knows? Cool. Wouldn't be the worst thing to get stuck in California. No, <laughs> it's not the worst place. Yeah. Um, so where can people check you out again? Yeah, dude, look us up at uh, latenightspecial.net. Uh, it's www.latenightspecial.net. And uh, you can get some of our free music from our old album. We've got some live stuff on there. Um, working on the YouTube channel right now, trying to get all the uh, uploaded videos that we're tagged in and everything, get that going before we launch it. And uh, I'm going to start doing some acoustic series, uh, me and Derek, just trying to get out and do some covers online. So follow us on the YouTube channel when it comes up. Just awesome. look us up, Late Night Special. We'll have all the links at the website. But All right, man. Well, thank, thanks, for the, uh, thanks for taking some time with me. Yeah, man, for sure, for cool. sure. Thank you. It's a new year. Don't go killing night's ear with nameless bullets if you ain't ready to take a bullet. Every 38 hours, the past few hundred hours, several times on the hour with black youth in the footage. Authorities over majority, authorized or unauthorized, violate lives of you or we hallucinating. Here with lives that change the laws, laws change to our lives, state rules to execute is a true understatement. Are we misunderstood or targeted? Any who misunderstand what target is. A person, object, or place attempted to aim at. I see us, I see them, aiming where we at. Awaken and aim back, awaken and aim back. Keep shooting up the sky, there'll be nothing to aim back. Yes. It's a new year. Don't go killing night's air with nameless bullets if you ain't ready to take a bullet. What goes up comes down. Damage and distance of travel depends on force of weapon, caliber, and path of the bullet. These segments of firing that signals by success the year brought to us is a false sense of accomplishment. Instead of the sky, we need to target the issues to be injustices, endure reaches abolishment. Spare night sky that pain, that rain of ammunition, that broke is outlaw that rain over children, enslaving, they slay and make prey of our children. See, we own one of them for our own pot to piss in. It's a new year. Don't go killing night's air with nameless bullets if you ain't ready to take a bullet. Openly shooting us down while we stand with phone cameras, reconstructing social networks with black youth in the footage, Sedated crowds, trials televised, yet still no more alive. No real consequences for the deaths of black lives. We all know the verdict, but we're common central eyes. Other than self-defense, homicide is homicide. Right. Under rugs we find cadavers of hate crimes. So many murdered while the camera played blind. Experimental times giving sight to blind eyes. Just fighting to survive with human organs advertised as ill. But it's a new year. Don't go killing night's air with nameless bullets if you ain't ready to catch a bullet. Yeah. All right, that was Mr. Witz of Granny's Boys fame uh, spitting a poem down there at the open mic at Petra's. Uh, it's called the Say Word Open Mic, I think. Say Word Poetry Open Mic. Uh, it's held at Petra's every first Monday of the month uh down at plaza midwood obviously uh up next we hear from junko partner and the knockoffs i caught up with them at open mic at a summer coffee up in davidson if you haven't heard of junko partner who also goes by the name mike stefano at some open mics uh, just so we know who we're talking about here you've been uh you've definitely been missing out uh junko is a uh, a regular at several open mics in the cornelius area especially uh the the one at summer coffee and then he's a regular over there at studio 13 our friends over there He's got uh, this really laid back and loose bluesy style about him, and it just kind of sucks you in. But there's there's an edginess to his lyrics too. His his original lyrics they're just reminiscent of of just kind of like uh, the dirty side of Americana, if you will, the real Americana. Anyway, I didn't get real good audio from his performance, so I'm leaving that out. But you can check him out on Facebook. Just do a search for Junko uh, J U N C O Partner and the Knockoffs, and you'll find what you're looking for. Uh, so I'm here in the park with Junko Partner and uh, uh, Ian, right? Yeah. Eden. Eden. Yeah. Eden. Gates be then. The gates. Be. So, <laughs> so you guys just uh, did a little set here at Summit Coffee for the open mic. Um, first of all, that song Cocaine, is that the, is that the title of the song? 
Cocaine, cocaine blues. Cocaine blues. Cocaine blues. Cocaine blues. Yeah. yeah. The reaction as, as the, the lyrics built up, it, like the reaction from the audience was interesting as they really realized what the subject matter was about. <laughs> right. Um, so Cocaine Habit Blues is, um, if you know anything about folk or blues music, it is um, it builds on each other. Take, for instance, uh, Henry Sloan. He was uh, never recorded. He uh, played in the 1800s, and um, he taught Charlie Patton. Then Charlie Patton uh, taught Robert Johnson and Sunhouse. They all met at Dockery Plantation. It was an interesting time for blues. Anyway, so blues blues always builds on um, builds on the past, and uh, Cocaine Habit Blues is not entirely original. Uh, Memphis Jug Band who recorded it in 1928. If uh, no one's ever heard that. I recommend that Cocaine Habit Blues, Memphis Chug Band. But um, I changed up the lyrics and I changed the melody and the structure and tried to make my own. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty good song. I, yeah, it's got a lot of layers there. Then uh, you you playing the, the guitar over top? Mm -hmm. Cause I've seen I've seen. Um, Junko play a couple open mics and stuff without the, the other layer, but man, your blues riffs and stuff. How long have you been playing? I've been playing for 16 years now. Wow. You're good, man. 16 out of 21. I've what? been doing it longer than doing anything. Yeah. So uh, what other projects do you are you involved with? You got another band and stuff? Or? I am not, man. I I did he's trying to do the singer-songwriter thing and that, that lyrical well ran dry pretty quick. Um, so i I played on my couch and was kind of kind of dormant until uh, got with Mike and had a chance to uh, to do my lead electrical noodling over somebody who knew what they were doing with an acoustic guitar. Right. Um, that that was uh, that's been my primary primary outlet for a while. I'm sure the songwriting will come back around, but right now I'm just happy to have to be playing over somebody who knows what they're doing. So are you guys gigging together as a duo kind of thing right now, or just kind of working that whole thing out? I guess we're still working it out. It's it's growing. The dates, the number of dates is growing. The frequency is growing. It is. It's not it is. regular yet. Um, so I'll be playing um, the Keg and Q the 21st and the 28th for a Roots Blues uh, solo musician, multi instrumentalist, kind of like myself. Um, and um, so. Eden will uh, be joining me at um, Hattie's, and that is, what's the date for that show? That's a good question. I think it's the 23rd, <laughs> June 23rd, that's Hattie's in Plaza Midwood. Right on. Plaza Midwood. We had a midget come and dance last time we played, it was freaking magical, so I'm hoping for a really? performance. It was fantastic. I'll have it's to make right it Right in the middle, front bit. of the crowd, midget dancing around. You said the 23rd? 23rd of June, yes sir. Yeah, I think that's an open night for me. So uh, you guys just got off of, uh, well, at least it just got put up, your tiny stage performance. Uh, mm -hmm. like, I like that guy, what that guy's doing. I hope to work with him. But what was that whole experience like for you guys as musicians? Well, I was I was really sick. I had the flu <laughs> that day, and I I was I was uh, I was nervous, man. I was that I was gonna I was gonna get sick right there. But uh, looking at myself on that video, I appeared. Appeared like a healthy young man. Yeah, it, it seemed pretty good to me. <laughs> yeah, I had no sounded, idea. It sounded great. I don't know. I uh, how'd you feel about it? I, I wasn't sick, but <laughs> I dropped my pick halfway through a solo. Yeah, yes, that's um, right. Which I didn't. I'm gonna be honest with you. It came out. I don't know. I'm six hours ago or something like that. I haven't even had time to watch it yet. But I remember flicking the pick and going. There's no way in hell he's going to use this take, and he used the yeah. freaking take. So I think he just plays it right, right through, doesn't he? He doesn't. He, he doesn't? doesn't. It's really close. Like you have to, like drop a guitar or have a stroke halfway through a song to get him to, yeah, delete that cut. Yeah, uh, but true. he will do it. So I'm like, come on, man, we got to retake and this. There, but he didn't. There's a few songs that we did that he did not release, and he'll be releasing at a later date. He calls it. Um, he calls it like the uh, alternate takes, something like that. Oh yeah, I've seen a couple of those videos. He does a really good job. With he does. He made me sound good. <laughs> yeah, you sound good everywhere you go. He he definitely documents it well. Um, so you're you're 
your music style, I think I put in a Facebook post that I said you're like the son of Arlo Guthrie and uh, Jim Morrison with a little bit of uh, Bob Dylan mixed into it. But you've also, like now that I've heard a little bit more aggressive of a set with the electric, you've definitely got a little punk rock in there. So what, do you, yeah, what would you absolutely. say your main influences are? Okay, uh, that's that's hard. Uh, Bob Dylan is an obvious one. Um, I um, hold uh, Highway 61 and Blonde on Blonde and uh, Reverence. I, those records are what I wish I could sound like recording. But I also do have like punk influence, uh, Iggy Pop with the Stooges. Uh, Fun House is one of my favorite records. But um, also psychedelic bands, 13th Floor Elevators, and uh, a more recent band, Spiritualized. Um, so I got influences all over, but uh, there's kind of a common thread between them, and that's um, blues, rhythm and blues, uh, some psychedelia. Mm -hmm. Are you guys both local from here originally? No. No. No, I'm from Buffalo, New York. Where I'm, from? I'm from Central Kentucky, man. I'm from the middle of nowhere. Man. So what, what brought you guys out here? Jobs, life, or was there something specific? Family. Right. <laughs> My dad moved us here for a cult church. Cool. So yeah. that's got a lot, have a lot of material in it. We'll visit that down the road someday. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to leave that one alone for right now. Right. I haven't quite sifted through it yet. Yeah, that's a lot to deal with, man. That's I why you never shit. accept my drinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what it is. All right, so uh, you guys, you said the 23rd, you're at Hattie's, and then what was the 28th? I forgot, the Keg and Q. Got anything else after that? Um, so the 21st and the 28th, Keg and Q. I'll, I'll link everything. I'll go through your, your okay. little Facebook events yeah. and, and do that in the post. Uh, what about recording? You guys think about doing anything as, as like an EP or anything? Yeah, absolutely. We, um, we tried... We, we tried once and we didn't like like how it sounded um, it was good to send out to uh, people but um, I'd like to record again I'd like to try again definitely then I'd like for there to be some uh, some sit down and think about it you know I as, as much blues playing as I do and in the style that we do it's it's okay sometimes to kind of do things off the cuff but I think to, right. to plan and sit down and carefully figure out a set and how to exactly. play something would, would probably help us out a lot. Right. Um, they would be. We had such limited be good. time last time that we kind of. We have short attention spans, man. That happens. We so have the do. stars have to align really quick, <laughs> which they will. I'm sure they will. Yeah. All right, Mel, uh, Junko partner. You guys call it the Junko partners. Is it Junko or Junko? Junko, right? Well, it's it's Junko, but uh, because of I, I guess you would say an accent, I say Junko. Yeah, but like there's hoops along above the U or something. Yeah, it's, Keep, it's where'd that where'd the word Junko come from? So there's a um, uh, folk song called Junko Partner. Well, actually, it's a blues song, but it's uh, New Orleans style and it's really old. And um, Junko Partner is this guy. Uh, Jun Junko uh, derives from junkies, so they would call people, you know, Junko. He's a Junko, and so that's that's an alter ego. He's he's a guy that uh, stumbles around, acting foolish, mm -hmm. ownery. But uh, so it comes from a New Orleans song. Man, you you got such a diverse catalog in there. All right, well, uh, I'm getting eaten up alive by mosquitoes, yeah, so I need yeah, to bring the kidding. citronella candles with <laughs> me next time. But uh, all right, guys, thanks, thanks for your time. Hey, thank all you right. so much thanks for much, recording man. us. Sure, I man. appreciate it. All right, taking us home tonight is the lovely Shane Manier. Uh, Shane's had a rough couple weeks. We won't really get into that here, uh, but she'll tell us about it here in, in this captivatingly heartbreaking poem that uh, that she wrote in the moment. So, um, I'm going to say some shit. I don't want anybody to applaud for me, though. Because <clears throat> it, it ain't going to be a celebration. Um, so, I just had a birthday. Don't applaud. Don't. Uh, last week, as well. Uh, June 6th. So, and this is how I'm working. Man. So, I'm at Party City, staring at the 
8.9 tank of helium, picking out a birthday balloon for myself and a strong ribbon, something red or silver or black. The helium tank costs $44.99. The balloon two bucks, which brings us to a total of my death. Did you know that exit bags are said to be the most painless way to kill yourself and the most peaceful way to leave your body behind for others to find. I know because I spent hours researching it. I figured this would be best considering. Inside, I am a mangled beast, a knot of tangled strings. I live so long that way. And they always say, you know, you don't have to look like what you've been through. The day I turned 33, my birthday was turned into a mockery. My mother dying in ICU only two days before, so I spent mine at the funeral home. Two days later, as if the mockery wasn't enough evidence, there had to be a, pa a pattern partnered with it. My poetry mother passes. Her husband said it was peaceful. Funny thing about losing a mother, for the survivors, nothing is peaceful. You don't just lose a mother, you lose a home, a best friend, you lose your friends because they can't handle the grief you're in. You lose safety, a family. My brother split apart like Adam's Adams when it happened, like an unbalanced equation. A mother's death works a lot like an exit bag. First, the oxygen. The main element that allows you to breathe is removed from the housing till there is nothing left to live in. You place the empty container over your head like the weight of mourning. You tie it, yourself, off from the world with the only pipeline out to allow the replacement of a gas to fill the air like booze, like weed, like a feeler, like an arm. You know about that. I had thought about the slicing method, but didn't think my wrists would be enough to offer. Seemed much more suitable to unzip from shoulder to fingertip to show the splay inside of all the shit I had been carrying for so long and still didn't think it enough to bleed it all out of me. This just seemed more fitting. I already had my breath taken from me. I haven't inhaled oxygen in two weeks, only pain, alcohol, and nicotine. My heart gurgling in its own goddamn blood, struggling to find a place for its beat to belong, finding myself alone. No one told me you could go through the same trauma as an orphan one. You are an adult. They say helium is a noble gas. So maybe it would be enough to exhale upon the arrival at heaven's gates. Maybe if Peter sees how silent and easy my death had been, he wouldn't think me a threat and let me in. It only takes two to three seconds to go unconscious. Two minutes for it to be over. It took my mother a two-second injection of painkiller and two to three minutes. I saw her try to breathe. The air was taken from her, it took mine with it. You know, when they took the ventilator off, her death rattle didn't sound like years of struggle. It sounded like a mother checking the lock to make sure you were safe. Sounded like the crack of cradle ribs to hold you in her embrace. Sounded like toys laid down under the trees at Christmas. Sounded like the crumple of telephone wire when you called to seek guidance. Sounded like the creak across the floor as she comes to kiss you to sleep. I was holding her hand when she went. That moment hasn't left me since. You know, at least, fuck, she looked at peace. I can only wish the same for me. Happy birthday. Y'all give it up for Shane one more time. Okay, uh, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our podcast through your favorite podcast app. We're available on iTunes and uh, Stitcher, Google Play, everywhere. Or you can check us out at, at piedmontartistprofiles.libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. Spread the word to all your friends. Uh, send me comments, complaints, whatever you got. I, I need to hear feedback. Uh, I could be doing all of this wrong, and, and you guys are just watching me steer this boat right out, off the uh, the abyss at the edge of this flat earth. Love you, mean it. Oh, yeah, this last song is Junker Partner. Roll on, Columbia.
So